There we go, my friends. Hey, we're uh, 7-3. Woo! We're looking at applications of the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, just looking at different different situations where we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We're on page 396, 397. Example 1, we're talking about a kite. Who doesn't love flying a kite? Here we go. What types of problems can you solve using the Pythagorean theorem? Think about this question during the lesson. Kiana is using a kit to build the kite shown here. The kit includes... She's using a kit to build a kite. A kit to build a kite. Three different lengths of wooden dowels. How can Kiana... Now, a wooden dowel is just basically a wooden stick, and she has different lengths of this wooden stick. Stick. Um, she's got to brace this thing diagonally. And diagonal just means from one corner to its opposite corner. Okay? And decide which pieces of wood to use as diagonal braces for the top or bottom of the kite. Let's begin by drawing a diagram. Use a rectangle to represent the top and bottom of the kite. All four corners are right angles. The side lengths are 28 inches long and 21 inches wide. What is the unknown length in this diagram? Select your answer. Huh, what are we trying to find? Well, these two sides connected to the right angle, those are always called your leg, which means this missing side here, that diagonal, that's what we call the hypotenuse. Remember, it's the longest side of a right triangle. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the diagonal. And you guys know this. 21 is going in there for A. 28 is going in there for B. Square them, add them together. You know what to do. Substitute the known values for A and B. It doesn't matter which value you choose for A and which you choose for B. The sum of the two squares will be the same. Yes. Find the squares and add the values. Find the square root of each side of the equation to solve for C. The length of the diagonal of the rectangle is 35 inches. So, Kiana could use the 35-inch dowel as a brace for the top or bottom of the kite. She could also cut the 49-inch dowel to a length of 35 inches. That's common sense. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve problems with squares and rectangles since the corners are always right angles. Okay, and that goes to the definition of what's called a rectangular prism. Okay, this is a rectangular prism because all six sides are rectangles. And the one thing you got to remember about a rectangle, every corner in a rectangle is a 90 degree angle, which opens up the possibility of using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so we need to remember that about all rectangular prisms. Okay, so let's look at the try it section. All right, what is the length of the diagonal of this rectangle with a width of length of 19 feet and a width of 17? So once again, grab your handy dandy little calculator. Okay, we've got a rectangle, okay, and it wants to know the length of the diagonal. Okay, diagonal, there you go. Okay, leg. We can call this 17, we can call this 19. We want to know what is the length of that diagonal. So once again, 17 squared plus 19 squared is going to equal, now they use the letter D to represent diagonal, that's fine. 17 squared, bingo, 289. Uh, what is it, uh, 19 squared, boom, 300. 61, add those together, plus that total, 650, okay? Find the length, remember, to unsquare a square, we find the square root of that value, so we find the square root of 650, boom, okay? Does it say round to something? Let's round it off to the nearest tenth, that's going to be 25 roughly 25.5, and that would be in feet. Okay. 
Um, this one here just says if the rectangle were a square. Now remember, all squares are rectangles because again, a rectangle is just the shape with 90 degree angles, okay? Four 90 degree angles. So a square is a rectangle. It's kind of confusing to think about, okay? It's just a special rectangle that has four congruent sides, but they all have four 90 degree angles. So if the rectangle were a square, would the process of finding the length of the diagonal change? No. Square the two legs, add them together, find the square root of that total. That's it. Okay, let's look at example two. Example two. Now we're looking at finding the diagonal of a prism. Okay, this is a little different. The good news is it's nothing new. The bad news is you don't just find the Pythagorean theorem once, you have to find it twice. So let's take a look at what they're saying. Alex has a column aquarium with a rectangular base. It has a height of 66 inches, a length of 10 inches, and a width of 14 and 5 tenths inches. What is the longest piece of choya wood that Alex can buy choya to fit wood. in his tank? The first step is to draw and label a diagram to represent the aquarium. Where should you draw the length of choya wood? Everybody loves some good choya wood, choya. okay? So, to find the length, what we're thinking about, the longest part of a rectangular prism is the distance from one corner to its opposite corner, okay? It's this diagonal. Ooh, that looks like fun. So, that's going to be where we draw the length of choya wood. Choya wood, fun to say. Choya wood. It's fun to say. Okay, here we go. The longest possible distance inside a rectangular prism is between two opposite corners. Just like I said. The next step is to find the length of the diagonal, D, of the bottom of the tank. The diagonal and adjacent two sides form a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Now remember, we have to find the length of this diagonal because to find the length of this choya wood, okay, if I trace that big triangle, Okay, we know this leg is 66 inches. Do we know what this leg is? No. Okay, the reason why we have to find it is because this leg of the big triangle is actually the hypotenuse of the base of that figure. So, a little confusing, but don't worry. Mr. Fricky, he'll make it work. That's right. We'll make it better. The sum of the squares of the sides is equal to d squared. Simplify the expression to find that 310 and 25 hundredths is equal to d squared, Ooh. which means that d is approximately 17 and 6 tenths. Hmm. Notice that the length of choya wood choya. is the hypotenuse of another right triangle. What? Now use the Pythagorean theorem again to find c, the length of the choya wood. Second time. The sum of the squares of the two legs of the triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, C. Calculate the squares, add them, and then take the square root of both sides to find that C is approximately equal to 68 and 3 tenths. A piece of choya wood that is about 68 and 3 tenths inches long is the longest piece that will fit in the aquarium. Wow. Sweet. There you go. So, finding... Uh, length of hypotenuse diagonal in a rectangular prism. We have to use the Pythagorean theorem twice. That sounds awesome. Twice. We could do an additional example. You want to? No. Okay. Kawani. Kawani. Okay. All right. We're going to go to example three. Trust me, you're going to do enough examples like that previous one. It's just one. more Pythagorean theorem. Okay? Folks. But all it is is using the Pythagorean theorem. All right, here we go. Example three. Sandra bought a triangular shelf to hang in the corner of her room. Will this shelf fit in the 90-degree corner? I don't know. Explain. Well, what do we need to do? Basically, if it creates a 90-degree angle, then that means A squared plus B squared would equal C squared. So if we look at their work, huh, it says use the converse. That's what you guys did in 7-2 to determine if it's a right triangle. Okay, if it's a right triangle, again, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
So they squared A and B, they added them together, they got 900. They squared C, they got 900. Will that thing fit in the corner of the shelf? Yes, mm -hmm. because A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which means it's a right triangle. That was easy. Let's go to the triad. Ooh, we throw one in out of the blue there. Whoa, okay. that's a that's pyramid. That's okay. We're going to make it work. We need to find the height of this pyramid. So a company wants to rent a tent that has a height of at least 10 feet for an outdoor show. Should they rent the tent shown? Explain. Well, we need to find this height. Now, the beautiful thing is we can draw a right triangle. Oh, uh, looky there. We know one side, Mr. Looky Noel. Looky there. Okay. We know, okay, and I'm going to try and draw it over here. We know this side is 15 feet. Can anybody out there? Here's my right angle. See, there it is. We don't know this. Can you tell me what this is? Well, 12 feet. it's not 24. I can tell you that. It is not 24. 24 is the length of the entire base of that pyramid. Now, dropping down to the center, look at that. It kind of cuts it in half. So what's half of 24? 12. 12. This side is 12. See how fast I did that? Nice job, Mr. Fricky. So we need to determine okay, the height of that. Well, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Which two sides do we know? Well, here's the two sides connected to the right angle. We know one of them. We don't know the other. So, we know A and C. Let's put 12 oh, in there for B and yeah. 15 in there for C. And let's solve that bad boy because we're missing one of the legs. Well, I square this number. That's 144. Man, am I good. I square that number. That's 225. What do I do to get rid of the 144? A little bit of subtraction. I subtract. Whoa, that's a one, ooh, 144. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. That's going to leave me A squared to equal 81. So that thing is 81 feet tall, right? Yep. No. Okay. No. Remember, this is a leg. It has to be less than 15. What else do I need to do to 81? Oh, well, this is a yeah. squared number to get 81. We have to find the square root of 81. And that square root of 81 equals nine nine feet nine feet that thing is going to be nine feet tall a company wants to rent a tent that has a height of at least 10 feet oh can we rent that one should we rent that one no 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 because this one's only nine feet tall the tent is only apparently they're going to have a lot of tall people yeah. that are going to be in the tent nine feet tall not me I would okay. fit in that tent. Yeah. All right, so that takes care of lesson 7-3. Uh, see you on the flip side on the key concept.